time all pro linebacker. Um, he's also the founder of Lights Out Extreme Fighting. That same mindset that you had that you brought to the NFL, all those games, my thinking is you're probably bringing that to the work that you're doing. And you want to be surrounded by people who are great at what they do. There's no different than being on a football field. What's your take on the state of the NFL these days? I think, um, you know. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for coming back. This is Shauna. I'm the host of This with Shauna Griffiths. And today we have an extra special episode. It's a business athlete episode, and it's featuring Sean Merriman, the three-time All-Pro linebacker. Um, he's also the founder of um, Lights Out Extreme Fighting. So, Sean, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, Shauna. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's so great to see what you're doing. And and folks, I always give you an idea of how I know my um, guests. And so this one came from my very good friend, Lane Werner, who is working with me these days. So she found, she and Sean connected on LinkedIn one day, and all of a sudden she was like, Sean, I've got your next guest. So I was really, really excited, Sean. And then I got to hear and kind of look into all the stuff you're doing with your uh, property. And I know you have the big fight coming up on Saturday, August 26th. Um, so let's start there and give the audience some context about that um, event and what you're doing with the platform. Yeah, I, I love LinkedIn, right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's actually exactly it does what it does. Links it links everybody. Um, <laughs> we we got a we got a big fight coming up in um, in San Diego, August 26, which is what 10, 10 a couple some what two almost two wait, a little under two weeks. Um, it'll be at uh, Casino Palma. And uh, it'll be live on football, football TV, football sports. All of our events are live. We got a great partnership goal with football. I actually just moved into the top five, the top ten most watched of football sports. My high school, the international soccer, and some other things. So it's been cool for us. But uh, you know, I've been around this this sport for seven, almost seventeen years now. And I was doing it during the off seasons. And my when I was playing football in the NFL. Uh, I just tried it out and I just loved it so much. I picked up a hat of passion for it. So I started to do it every single off season, uh, which led me to launch Lights Out Extreme Fire. That's awesome. And so because you launched it like in 2019, is that right? Yeah. So what happened like during the pandemic? What what were you experiencing with the platform? And, you know, I mean, were you able to have events and what happened? It, it was a nightmare. Uh, it was a nightmare because, you know, we... Mm -hmm was so well viewership wise obviously picking up um you know a, a, a nice footprint here in the states and people knowing about us and we start going out to other regions and being seen everywhere else and then boom overnight everything was lights out <laughs> stop no seriously and you know for us it was it, it was difficult because you know when you're a startup promotionally you're you're gaining that kind of notoriety, that fast, and something like that happened. It's like tragic. It's like, oh my god, what do we, what do you do? You know, it's not like we're sitting around, we're funded, and we can, you know, kind of sit on our heels and wait to come back. It's like, hey, we got to get going now because um, the opportunity for us is now. Um, I think the silver lining in, in that came out was um, I had a better understanding of where media was going, right? Um, I think the UFC did a great job during that time period of by, by still having fights. They were like the only one still out in the fights. Um, but what they did was they, they launched the Apex where they were having fights in the smaller facility, but it was shown on TV still. So that kind of let me know that, okay, well, it's nice to be in these big arenas, but your streaming and TV partner is more important, right? Like it's important. So I, 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 the landscape became very simple to me. Is just give more, give more content to the streaming partner, give more opportunity to the streaming partner that you can how to work organically grow when, they, when you look at it. Yeah, absolutely. It was so interesting, like that time you had like the NBA went into the bubble, the WNBA was in the bubble. So I think there was a lot of that with sports properties doing that smaller experience just to pull it off. And to your point, it gave you an opportunity to see what other people were doing. So um, with so you are starting this, kind of had to do a restart, right? And so... I've worked in the start of a league and a team, and it is not easy. Yeah. So, I mean, it takes that. This is what I kind of talk about as the business athlete, that mind, that, that same mindset that you had that you brought to the NFL, to all those games. My thinking is you're probably bringing that to the work that you're doing. 
it, it's <laughs> that that's the way I that's the way I survive, right? I think that um, and especially when I talk to these former athletes, transitioning to anything else is difficult, right? Because you are starting from in a way ground up where uh, you came from being here, and now you have to be okay with that that rolling up your sleeves and that grind. Um, I think for me, being around a sport and also being in TV, as I was at Fox Sports, NFL Network, some ESPN, understanding how TV works, right? Uh, production side of things, understanding that part of it. It helped me grow a lot faster because I was well equipped to make that transition faster, right? I knew all the best production guys, all the best operation guys, all, you know, so I was like, okay, I've got these great ideas, but who can help me facilitate these ideas? So I knew exactly where to pour from. And that's, I would, I would really say that the growth um, really started there because I understood how to get, how to get there. I wasn't trying to figure it out. I was like, man, I've been doing TV for a long time. I know it in May. I know a ton of fighters. I've been training this for a long time, and it was a it was a perfect match. And that's why you know we are the love you are with Subo. Yeah, absolutely. So I told you in the beginning we were talking that the audience that listens to this is highly skewed toward the business audience. A lot of people in the marketing, branding, sports side of things. So I'm curious, how should those type of people think about your platform? Um, and what it offers, be it the media side, be it to brand partners, how is that different? You know, um, when I first started out, you know, we I haven't raised any capital. I haven't done anything. I kind of, it's, it's been me. I'm looking at a list of B pockets over here, right? <laughs> um, and so when I was first, first talking about the league, just the opportunity to have people come in, I noticed my, my pitch and approach was wrong because I was leaning more on the fight business and the you know that side of it but what we slowly found out that the opportunity and the upside of this thing is in the content and there's mm. no shit and the sponsorship but other verticals involving tech now we talked a little bit before i came on about you know these new gloves and different things and we're going to be implementing more tech into what we're doing the upside is there the fight the fights are going to be that the fight's going to be great the production's going to be great I started to learn, what else can we do to bring the fans and people more closer to what we're doing? What else can I do to get the attention of the eyeballs of people who may not be able to make it to our fight and make it, make it, make it feel like they're closer to the action? So that's what we started to do. I said, okay, well, this, uh, you know, a lot of AI now is kind of coming around, fan engagement tech, um, a lot of uh, data that is that could just you across in this in this business because you have live action you got three hours of live content how many people watch it where are they watching from what how many times they turn the channel so all this stuff that we're getting i'm like okay i need all that i need everything right uh and so that is allowing us to say okay this is what people like this is what they don't like let's do more of what people like and so one of the things we wanted to do um for us is to first of all be creative and you know me coming from the nfl and understanding that things like fantasy football is what grew the sport and fantasy football in the nfl was huge because it allowed the fans to be closer to the teams closer to the players so i understood that part well i was like okay i know growth happens when the fans are more involved in what you're doing so now um with the gloves and some of the things that, that's coming around we want to be able to uh, give live data to the fans and, and people watching. Hey, how how fast that was that punch? You know, how powerful was it? The impact of it? Where did it land? Uh, where place is, uh, in a cage that our guys get it's awesome frequently? And so all these things are happening right now for us, and um, that that part of it is, is exciting for me because that I don't get me wrong. I, I love the sport. I love these guys fighting. I get it. But when you could tell when the guy gets hit and how often he's getting hit, not with the 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 velocity of that punch. Now we're talking about a different ball game, and it, it, I think it's going to fit the interest of a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even for that media partnership, it helps that media partnership come to life. I would imagine so much more. As you're saying it, I'm thinking about like on-screen graphics or how that can translate into your digital that you're you know that you're also using. Yeah, no, no question about it. For us, you know, that's a multi-purpose data usage. Uh, it gives us more data to possibly give to the fans, give to the fighters, get to the broadcasters, get to the anybody that's that's looking for data. I mean, I, I, either the I've, I've always been into data. I just didn't know 
how deep I was into and how much I liked it until I'm like, oh, that, you know, that happened because of that or that happened because of this. Now it's gives me a better understanding. But there, there's tons. We, we have AI companies reaching out to us on a daily basis that are trying to implement something that they're doing into what we're doing, right? Because it's, it's live action. And right now, I just look at us as being into, I know it's MMA, it's, it's combat sports, but we're in the, we're in the live event space, right? And I think that's the hottest business in the country right now. If you can, if you can have a great product with, with live events, everyone, every standing service, every TV partner wants that right now. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go back to a second for a second, the um, fight you have coming up um, in San Diego. So I heard some stuff about it that you're really having um, some local fighters. So talk to us about your philosophy around that localization. Yeah. Whenever we try to, uh, whenever we come to a city, we try to make it very city based. Right. Um, so obviously I played, I played with the Chargers when they were in San Diego. Um, I, we did a huge partnership with a lot of the uh, soldiers and military on Camp Pendleton. So a lot of the soldiers will be there. Um, a lot of vets, wounded vets, um, you know, a lot of the the organizations that work with in San Diego. And then also, I think like between 70 and 80% of the card is from San Diego. Um, and we'll try to build up the other card with amateurs and, and most of the pros from the area. And obviously, because we're on TV, we have to have a couple of names in there that people know in every main space and, and they kind of yeah. watch. But for the most part, when we come there, we want to make it important for the city to be involved and the locals and the community, because that's that's what you really build your your ground at, right? By oh. when you say, you know, you're not coming in just throw a fight, you're getting everybody in the area involved. And that's when you really uh, have strong growth. Yeah, absolutely. Are there local brands or regional brands that have got involved or that are that are interested that you're getting some of that interest level from? Yeah, we'll we'll try to have um, on site activations with with the local stuff. So either they are a full on spar a full on sponsor, we'll try to have them come and set up shop, a desk, a booth, or something like that. I mean, you have over a thousand people that's you know it's it's pretty nice to have your product or your brand or your business company, whatever it is, exposed to a thousand plus people. Yeah. I thought that that was cool to try to implement that a little bit. Yeah. And I touch on that because, you know, we've talked about obviously like your background in the NFL, my background in the NBA. And a lot of times like there are brands that are getting priced out or like UFC, maybe brands get priced out at that level. But I don't think that's one of the great things as I've been looking into your platform is it really does have community roots and it has, it seems to have like really engaged fan base. And, you know, there are plenty of brands I think that are out there that want that type of a touch point. And again, they might right now, you know, they'll get priced out of some of the other things. And, you know, at some point you'll be pricing people out, <laughs> but now, you know, it's a different story. I think that, um, even when we get to a point, we will get to a point where things are a much bigger, much more brand. But there's ways to implement the, the locals and whether that's graphic stuff during a fight, um, you know, if you have over a thousand people, say so you might not make the mat space, right? They might not have a logo on the mat space. They might have a set up there with, you know, with a thousand or 2000 people in attendance that they have instant asset access to. Yeah. So there, there's ways to make it happen. They just might not get the the grand stage to some of the, some of the big ones. Obviously we got bills to pay, but yeah. Uh, I think the I think the biggest thing is just to having no matter who we are having those locals involved. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And also, but you do have that local side, but you also have this national side with you know with your media. So again, like you're getting a lot for a property like this that I just wanted to kind of sort of put an exclamation point on for the audience. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a true. Uh, our title sponsor is a company I'm with. I show it's company called Family First Life. Um, they yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm with them. I actually have an agency myself. I like to show an agency with them. Uh, Ghost, who just came up with Ghost Energy, is my 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 favorite energy drink, and a good friend of mine. I work with the company, and I've been hounding them. I said, "Dude, we we gotta have you involved somehow, some way," and we did. Uh, and then Maverick Gaming uh, was a you know they have a bunch of few casinos and card games, mm -hmm. um, online you know online betting action and stuff coming. So it's it's been fun. It's been cool to have. Um, now, not only just the locals involved, because we'll have stuff stand set up and yeah. 
actually known brands that, you know, kind yeah, of absolutely. giving us the confidence that, hey, we, we see the numbers, we see what you guys do, we see the product you're putting out. So how can we be involved? So that meant a lot for us. Yeah, absolutely. And you did, I heard you talking one um, in something I was listening to about the betting aspect. And so when you were first thinking of creating um, Lights Out, were you thinking of the betting angle or is that something that just like evolved over time as it became legal in spaces? I, I think it just evolved. Um, mm -hmm. because, you know, five, six years ago, we had no clue right. how in depth the, the betting were, and the gaming was going to be involved into live sports. Um, yeah, I, I remember playing the hit in the NFL where if you even did a signing with DraftKings or FanDuel, anybody, it was like off limits. You couldn't couldn't even do it. And yeah, now it's like it's everywhere. You can't even turn on a, 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 any kind of live sports without one of those big ones popping up. Um, and so the, the landscape of, of gaming has just changed tremendously. So to, to be able to implement that, now we won't be taking any action on it. We won't be doing anything, but when you have it available, it just means more eyeballs. Okay, so it's funny when you were talking about that element of, you know, again, like five or six years ago, it made me think about from playing, from your playing days to the business side of things, are, what are some of the things that really, I don't know, maybe like took you by surprise or you were like, whoa, I wasn't exactly expecting this. I'm just so curious about it. You know, um, there was some, something you say when we first started out, it's that mindset you had uh, of like that approach, that preparation, watching film, working out, training that just wanted to compete all the time. That I like, I that's one of the things when we, I wake up in the morning, like looking to compete or something. I just, every time I go out to bed, I'm like, I'm gonna go, let me, I wanna do more. Um, and so, and you also taking that to business and wanted to learn more stuff. I mean, I, I was um, making the, you know, the correlation the other, about, about a week ago, a friend of mine, I said, when I first started, uh, football, I had no idea how to pass rush. I never had a quarterback sack until I got to college, you know, and all of a sudden my my coaches said, hey, uh, we want you to go get the quarterback. And I'm like, okay, how do I do that? I've never done that. Yeah. And so what I did was I just started to every day after practice work on my pass rush moves and I learned how, I had to learn how to be a mm -hmm. pass rush. It's no different here, right? I mean, it's um, it's certain verticals or certain ass, uh, you know, certain parts of this business that um, you still, I, I still learn on every day and you try to go out and give the best people of what they do. And that's, that's always my thing. I say, I, I, I teach you do it or you're great at it. If you could, yeah. do it, okay. If you're great at it, let's, let's do it. I need you to do this, right? Cause I mean, you want to be surrounded by people who are great at what they do. There's no different than being on a football field. You want your best players do what they do. Great. And if they, mm -hmm. if they're great at it. Don't do it. And my, my coach used to do it all the time. I, I sucked. I hate, I hated uh, dropping in coverage, right? I hated cover running backs and tight ends and running down the field. I'm like, coach, let me just go get the quarterback. Let me, let me make everybody's life a little bit easier. And so 80% of the time, I want to go get the quarterback. No different here. You know, you want to be surrounded by people who are great at production, great in operations, um, great on the tech side, great in marketing, sponsorship. You get the best position. And for me, I just go back to lead the team. That is really what it comes down to. It's so true. It makes it so simple then, I think, because I think that can also help to remove any like drama or things like that that go on because it's like, do you want to win or not? Because we are going to work as a team. And I literally have said to people on teams of work, I don't care if you like each other or not. All I care about is if you can find a way to win. Now you have to be able to work together. I'm not saying to be horrible to one another. But it's, I think it can just boil it down to when you really think of it through the lens of optimal performance on the field, in business, it just, uh, it makes it so simple. It's, it's, look, it, I, I've gotten fights with teammates before who I, who I liked and didn't like. Some of them were my best friends who I fight and some of them I didn't like at all as so we fought. One thing we always had in common is when that, when the game day came around on Sunday, we were on the same page. And I don't care yeah. what happened the week before, two weeks before. We are all the same page and we are like brothers doing Sundays. That'd be period. And, you know, everybody hasn't had that philosophy of like, hey, nobody's stepping on one's toes, but let everybody be great at what they do. And when it comes time, let everyone who's great at doing their thing come together. And that's how you win. And sometimes you, you have people that, that just don't want to do that and you got to make changes, right? I mean, I went through that all the time where, you know, somebody say, oh, well, you know, I don't like working with him. I don't like doing that. And I'm like, okay, how about everybody just work together? Let's figure yeah. this out. Because 
I'm about women. Like, I'm I'm with people who I don't necessarily like that much. But I'm yeah. If you great at it, if you can get it done, we are we are good. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so funny when you're saying that it made me think of, I would tell people when they talk about deadlines and like something's urgent, a lot of times they think back to like, there's, there's urgency and then there's a different kind of urgency. Like when you're opening up, cause again, I told you I worked in the NBA family for a long time. When you've got a 20,000 seat arena and those doors are going to open up at 7 PM, that's a different kind of deadline and a different of urgency. And so I'm curious, like, how, how are you experiencing that, especially, again, like, knowing you have this fight coming up in San Diego, Saturday, August 26. You've got people who can watch, you know, through the through the FUBO. You've got people who are going to be there and in, in the attendance. So what's that? What's that like? And how has you, you know, kind of galvanized this team around you to make that happen? Chaotic. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's very chaotic. We, um, I think that, First of all, you have to learn how to operate in chaos, right? I mean, as crazy as everything is, I, I have to be the one that is cool and, you know, kind of, you know, direct and everything. And even though everybody else is panicking, they should be going to hell. And you got to just delegate and figure it out and just move forward. Um, I think that um, for me it is make that, you know, make that correlation is, is fight week, right? So fight week is coming up that last week, that one day to the fight is over on Saturday. You just... There's a commission, there's there's production. We got our production calls, operations, last minute changes, fighters dropping out, last second injuries. You got to get somebody else. Maybe somebody missed weight. It's like from Monday until Saturday, your hair is on fire. <laughs> and for us, you know, we're, we're slowly implementing these other things. So now when you start drawing in these tech opportunities and things, we're trying to build these other work to make sure um that everything is working is and, and flowing smoothly and that's in between all um, the the media right obviously I'm, I'm non-stop promoting and i try to be everywhere i can to talk about lights out extreme fighting so now i'm doing all this i may get a call that a fight just dropped the commission has a problem with this and i mean this like crazy and then for me i was like oh, okay cool this is this is just all this is this is normal tuesday all right it, yeah it's, it's, <laughs> Everybody else like going crazy. I'm like, oh, this just is all Tuesday. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Uh, but it's once you once you learn how to operate that way, things slow down uh, for you, and you don't panic as much. You know, it's a part of a part of the process. You got to enjoy the process. Yeah. Um, and once you enjoy the process, everything else is easy. Yeah, it's really interesting though. Like that same kind of mindset that you would bring as a leader on the field when you're a leader in business. Anytime, I think that leadership element of slow down before you speed up. If you're remaining calm as you're talking about, like that has such a ripple effect on the people around you, your partners. I swear the fans can even feel that kind of thing. Oh yeah. So I hate, uh, you know, funny story. I met uh, uh, Jen and my Chargers group, uh, Jen, he's, she's uh, like the head of the Chargers fan club, you know, a really good friend of mine. Um, and they know me well, right? And so they came to the fight, and they just see me like my face is always, I'm just focused a lot there. Man, they're not used to seeing me like that. I said, during, just during this time period, you know, you're worried about the TV trucks in the back. You know, our fighters coming out all the time. Is there anything last second that's happening? Is there any connection that somebody's dropping coverage? Or It's just all kind of things that you're wor worried about. Obviously, you, I'm there entertaining new partners, new sponsors is coming on. And so it's a lot, but I'm just so locked in because those three, four hours of that day, you're hoping that everything is, is clicking. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know we've had a couple of snafus tech wise and everything today and you've been calm and cool through it also. So thank you so much. Um, but you talked about earlier, like it's not just, it's not, that's a discredit, but it's not just a sport and a fight. It's also you actually think through the lens of a show. Like it's a production. And so and I've seen so like sport has shifted so much that way. I, mean, I was working in the NBA when all of a sudden it's like I say that you go to a game and a, a circus breaks out of the court. So but again, for our audience, talk a bit about that. Like how do you look at it as a show coming to life and, and what are you hoping to do with that? Well, for one, you know, we're in the entertainment business, right? Even when I play football, we're still in yeah. entertainment business of people paying money to come watch us play. And people are just watching or whatever, whatever TV part or whatever service that we're on. 
Um, and so you're entertaining the people because without the fans and the people there, you, you don't grow. There's nothing to watch, right? There's no tickets to sell. There's no beer to sell. There's no food to sell. Like, the fans are number one, always. And then so we look at that. Oh, is the production quality good for the people that's watching it, right? Is that, are people enjoying that? The second part is when the people come to a Lights Out of Train fighting uh, event, is the experience good, right? The log, the line's too long for the restaurant. We don't want the line's too long for people to buy food and alcohol. Can they get to their seat? Is everything organized? And so, you know, this fan first. And then this, the other part of that is then you start looking at the, the fighters, make sure everybody's good and taken care of, make sure everything's good. It's, it's entertainment. It's, mm -hmm. it, at the end of the day, it's entertainment. Uh, it just so happened to be in a, in a combat sports space. But it's entertaining. People are just coming to be entertained for those three or four hours. Yeah, absolutely. So three or four hours, again, like talk to me about this coming, this event coming up Saturday, August 26th. Yep. Um, What? Three to four hours. Like what? We, I think a lot of people can think of that and know what that means for a football game or a basketball game. But what does that look like for fights? Well, you know, doors are open around six o'clock and off. Okay. Fight to start around seven. We we know to like to let people get in, get you know comfortable, get their seat, and, and kind of. Um, some of them have we have amateur fights first, right? So a lot of those amateur fights are local. They'll come out, um, and everybody, their friends, family, cousins from the gym, you know, people drove down like out fighting them for lights out. So you see a lot of that first, and then by you know seven thirty ish, then you start to see all the all the seats full because our pro cards start like around 8 or 8 30 then we'll go till 10. um and so yeah so you're really looking at from 7 p.m pacific to 10 p.m so there's three hours of live content uh content with commercials oh all kind of you know back and forth from the tv truck to the commentators there's a lot of moving parts in that you know spanish broadcast because we're so um nice. we're actually showing in canada france and spain outside oh, wow. of us and so there's a there's a lot of moving parts where I'm kind of popping in doing every I'm popping on the uh, on the English broadcast. I'll oh really? English broadcast. I'll go over there with a sponsor. I'll go, you know, like I'll go, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, whatever it is. I'll go back in this TV truck, whatever it is. And so that's that what that's what my you know my four hours that day look like. So you get a workout <laughs> there. That's awesome though, because again, like earlier you were talking about local, then we were talking about the national, but it's actually international, which again, because of this audience who's listening, I want to make sure that we're really painting that picture. And that's interesting. I didn't, first of all, I didn't know that all of that element, and I didn't know that you were broadcast during that entire time. So that's, uh, thank you so much for sharing all that. Yeah. I think, you know, <laughs> It's it's funny. So I doing our games. We played had a Sunday night football game or Monday night football game to get there, and all the cameras and stuff is already gone, right? Yes, they're they stolen the top of the field. They're setting up. You see the smoke and everything is is just there, right? It's, yeah, this is nice. You have no idea what goes into that setup, right? Oh, yeah. No, like like now being on this side of the business and looking back how the production was for the NFL and. You know, the sky cameras and uh, the rotating cameras and the cameras from up top of the stadium, the blimp, everything. And it's like, this is a massive, massive deal. It's a massive, massive setup. Yeah. And even on a smaller scale for us, you see how hectic it is, right? The deep trucks, the this, the that. And it's like, oh my God. Yeah. So when you look back, when you look back at all of it, um, I think that having that experience allowed me to see what the grand scale. Yeah. Like. And say, okay, cool, we'll get there, but right now we need to perfect what we're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that probably makes a big difference also for your athletes. You know, they, you know, to some degree, obviously, like what they're going through. Obviously, because you play, you're, I guess you don't, you don't play the fighting, but <laughs> whatever you say, um, you know. So I just think that brings out such a nice authenticity for it. it it's, it's so. Uh, I tell you a quick story about that. <laughs> I had one of the fighters, uh, all men's fighter we had in May. Um, be like, like to go out in the cage and fill the cage out, get under the lights, move around a little bit, get warmed up, yeah. go back in and, and prepare to, for, for battle. Um, and one of, one of the guys was a young kid. He was a fan of mine growing up. I think he was probably 23 or 24 now, and he's watched me back when he was like 12, right? Yeah. And he said, uh, man, did you, um, did you ever get nervous before a game? I said, dude, every single one. Yeah. Every single one. 
He said, how does you, uh, he said, how does you fix it? I said, well, you know, they got to hit somebody. We'll get it. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's so he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's a good, how do you think of it? But yeah, but it was funny to me because you know, I was able to give him, you know, that advice because it's true. Even during our preseason, I would get nervous before every game. And it wasn't to that first contact where I'm like, okay, well, I, I'm, I feel normal now. Right. Uh, so I just, t- I told the kid, I said, Hey, you know, just get punched in the face or punch somebody in the face. And, just, <laughs> and that was it. And that was, um, that was the only conversation I had with him that day. That was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. That's actually, so I'm laughing because if you think about the, the translation of that to the business side, it is so true. Sometimes you just, you're nervous as heck to go pitch something to whatever. It's like, no, he has got to step in the room and get punched in the face. You know, now because <laughs> that non-physical punch in the face and just keep it moving. It's like, you know, it's it's so interesting. Um, so I want to ask you a couple of things before I let you go. I can't let you go without asking your opinion on some hot topics, air quotes, hot topics. So what's your, what's your take on the state of the NFL these days? I think, um, you know, when, you, when you're talking about the physicality of, of the game, like back when I played, it, it, it was, the times are different. Right. And you, you didn't get away with a lot more, a lot, <laughs> lot less tonalities, and, you know, it's a different time period. And so I never wanted to be like the old football player to say, you know, back in the day we had the leather helmets and no team. We, you know, they, <laughs> now, like, I, I don't like that part of it. Um, I think that all the players kind of change over times. Like, they yeah. change over the time. They change them based on the rules, based on how everything is now. The money's so much bigger. Guys don't want to play in a pro bowl. And, or back when we won 40, 50,000 in the pro bowl, we're like, great. Now, you know, thousands of these guys, they only want to get touched, right? Yeah. Uh, and so the, it's just different. But overall, the, the NFL will constantly – get bigger and grow um, because they are are now pushing on the global market. They, the charges I saw that was playing the other day, we had a the de- defensive tackle had his, uh, had a sack. He just tried out for the NFL Africa last year, right? And he got it for his first sack in the preseason game, never played football before, just tried out for Africa. Now he got a sack. So as long as those type of things are happening, the football will always be king here in, in the States. Yeah. Always, not nobody would never, ever be able to take that. That yeah, yeah. But as soon as they start to get the players internationally, it's it's going to mm-hmm. even yeah, be. yeah. That's a good point. Okay, nil. Give me your take on nil. Wild Wild West. Uh, <laughs> it's the Wild Wild West, but I, I'm glad it, it, it's about time. Like, right. I never understood the point of guys not being in to make money on their own names. I never, I just never understood that. College or not, you know, you, you, I, it's my name. I own it. It's come from my family, and I should be able to profit off of it. Mm. Um, I think at some point in time, there'll be a lot more restrictions. They pass now, try to get everything in the wraps because if you just start handing out money with no recourse of action, um, then it can get a little crazy, and it has gotten a little crazy. Um, mm. somebody, some of these kids are making more money than people in the pro right now. Mm. And uh, it is going to continue to get bigger, especially to your, to your top athletes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, this is funny. Kind of crazy. What happened to your mohawk? I got grays now. So <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I was I was perfect for this. I was like, I was like, wait, what happened to this mohawk? I gotta ask him. <laughs> yeah, I got grays now, so I had to let it go. Um <laughs> you know, it was I, I think the I think the Mohawk at that time because I had this this whole like lights out persona and the way I played my attitude, it was like, if it was fitting, it was like a character out of a comic book that you know, you're, you're coming to play this lights out dude and was going crazy out here for 60 minutes for four quarters. And like this dude got a blue mohawk and he is literally going to try to rip your head off. Right. <laughs> so it was, yeah, I think it was, um, it, it just played into everything that I was about and the way I, and yeah. how I played, you know, we talked about the, the state of the game now, like, Having a blue mohawk now to fly around trying to take people's heads off ain't, ain't going to in the NFL. So I, I, I had my it was good. It was fun while I left. True, true. That's so interesting, though, the element of sometimes we do play to a certain character. And sometimes we have to do that, even in business. You know, it's like you know who's going to be in the room. You got to read the room, know how to, again, play a certain character to get some stuff done. I hope that comes out right. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
No, hundred percent. It's just you know, um, you're putting on your, you put it on the face, right? Whether you're going to pitch in or you're in a certain position, and and you're, you're putting it as a character, somebody to have to trade because you know when you get home, yeah, you can let your hair down and kind of kick your seat up and be who you are, but right there in that position, whatever you're doing, if you're pitching a new idea, you're you're leaving. Yeah. If, or whatever it may be, you're 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 that you're somebody else. Why they're doing that, right? Yeah, it's. Just, I think it's a, a little bit of this game phase because I think everything was talked about. What comes across, Sean, is you're so authentic, and I really appreciate that because. And I have people on here who are representing diverse, authentic leaders, and I love to see what you're doing and how you've transitioned from being so successful on the field to what you're doing in business. And I think, but I think part of that core that comes through with you is your authenticity and it's that game face you're still sean you're still all the things that you have learned along the way but it's game time and i, I don't know that's just what comes across as we're talking yeah no it's it's always game time for me and, and I, I think that you know i, I was i was very fortunate being an athlete right because yeah. i do believe and you can you kind of attest to this that we think different um, yeah we, we handle adversity a little bit different. Uh, our, how we approach different things is is different than the normal average would be. And I'm not saying we're better, but our mindset is, is kind of different in how we approach things. We just, when you're transitioning from one thing to the next and just got to figure out, how do I do this over here the same way I did that? And yeah. so as soon as you figure that out as an athlete, you become like what I what I like to say dangerous in, in being able to grow and, and, and being successful because are we able to take our minds so we're different than most people can't, um, whether it's dealing with entry, dealing with being cut, bench, yes. you know, whatever. We we, we got a different way of scanning about us. And mm -hmm. you're able to take that and to do something else. You can, as I like to say, you can be dangerous out here with, with success. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. Last thing I want to ask you about is you have this thing that you do on social media where you say, sign them up where you show these different clips and stuff and it drew me in. So tell the audience, like, where did that come from? And, and it's so funny. I, you know, it's uh, it started off as a serious thing, right? So now that a lot of people know that I'm in a, in a combat sports business, right? Uh, I wait, a lot of fighters will reach out to me and, and direct message on Instagram and, and Twitter, wherever else. Say, hey, you know, I'm trying to come fight the lights out of trade fighting. So I said, Hey, send me over one of your last fights. Yeah. And some of them would be really good. These guys are top, had big wins and other promotions, look great. I'm like, okay, I can sign you up, right? Oh, right, right. Ones that didn't, and I'm looking at me up for it. I had a guy that sent me something over, a kid that sent me, he got knocked out. And I was like, why did you, why did you sit? Out of all your fights you had, you sent me the one you got knocked out. Like, that's not, that's not the one you sent me. So I had this thing. It became, it was started out serious. It became funny. Like, oh, no, I, can't I, got, I can't sign them up. So I started to post these fight videos of of what, uh, any fight that happened. Now, people ask me all the time, how do I find those videos? I'm like, people, send it to me. You know, <laughs> anytime a fight that happens on social media, anytime I get tagged every single day. Oh, my God. That's somebody. I saw, so, I saw one that looked like a bunch of, like, kids or something like high school age like helping each other you're on the side or adult side of both but anyway i think i thought it was great it was it's really funny <laughs> yeah so all right so i know you have so much to get doing um you know as you're going into that big fight so any last things you want to make sure again knowing who our audience is that you want to make sure that they take away from um this episode aside from watching on saturday yeah. <laughs> august 26 on fuba I think the biggest thing is, you know, we're, we're definitely always looking for partners in the tech space, sponsorship, um, experience. I mean, you can't, you can't have enough experience on, on the team. And so, you know, we, we, we are, we become an incubator for uh, a lot of AI and tech and, and different avenues out of different verticals. Uh, distribution, always looking for more distribution, more eyeballs. So, you know, we're, we're you know, we're open. I, I like to say we're open for business, but we always do partnering with the right people because uh this thing is definitely has, has taken off and and it's going to take off yeah that's awesome well i wish you the best with it hope we can stay in contact thanks everybody for listening today and um we'll get put all the links to the show and you'll get to see everything coming up to the show on the 26th so thanks so much sean have a great day you got it. Thanks, thank you